If you want to make a move on a woman, maybe it's a girl that you're talking to at a bar or a party or a social event. Maybe it's a woman you met off of a dating site and now you're across from her at a coffee shop. Maybe it's a, 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 a coworker and you're in the cafeteria talking to her or you come over to her desk on a daily basis and you want to move things from that platonic level to that level where she begins to feel attraction for you, right? We all know that there's a switch in a conversation where all of a sudden it becomes a flirtatious conversation. If you fear doing that because A, you don't know how to do it, or B, you're afraid that she's going to reject you and it's gonna be awkward and you're gonna have all this sort of negative feelings about everything, then you're absolutely gonna to wanna to watch this video because I have a friend with me, his name is Richard, and he has been doing something really, really interesting. For 12 years now, every single weekend, he is a dating coach who takes guys out into the field, meaning he brings them out with him to nightclubs um, out in London, and he works with them, and he has them go and approach women, and he has them talk to women, and he helps them craft what they're gonna say, and he helps them ultimately, his entire business revolves around not letting these guys get rejected. Because if they get rejected, they walk away from the coaching experience having paid him a lot of money and very unhappy. So knowing that, he devised for four years, he just worked on everything he was doing was how can I eliminate these guys from getting rejected? How can I create an under the radar attraction building strategy? And that's what we're gonna discuss in today's video. I have Richard with me for an interview and we're gonna talk about all of the things he learned watching these guys out in bars and clubs and how to subtly build attraction. He has a metaphor where he calls the attraction threshold, right? And he talks about how if you have a frog and you wanna boil a frog, if you have a pot of boiling water and you throw the frog in, it's gonna immediately jump out and you're not gonna be able to boil it. On the other hand, if you put the frog in cold water and you slowly turn the temperature up on the water, over the course of you know, 10, 15 minutes, you're slowly dialing the temperature up and the water's getting hotter and hotter. The frog starts boiling before it ever realizes what happens. And Richard's entire strategy is based on that metaphor, right? It's slowly turning the attraction dial up so that you don't risk that rejection that we all fear. Um, so you want to watch this video. It starts right now. It's about 30 minutes long and we go into so many good tactics and techniques. You're absolutely going to love this. Hey guys, Bobby Rio here with uh, my friend Richard LaRuina. And uh, Richard, how's it going today? Yeah, very good. Nice to be speaking to you. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited for this because um, Richard and I have been friends for, for close to 10 years now. And it's probably been about five or six years since, since I've actually sit down and, and done one of these interviews with him. And he was in the past, one of the guys that I always really enjoyed jumping on these kind of calls with, because I always got something out of it personally. And, and I knew that my listeners and my readers always seem to really enjoy this. So I'm excited for today. Great. Me too. So first, I guess the question I'd have for you is just, you know, kind of for, for guys that might not be familiar with you, um, Give us a little background of how you got into this, you know, kind of, you know, maybe a minute on, on, on your, your story, kind of fill guys up to speed who, who might not know who you are. Cool. So I was a 21 year old virgin. I was very shy, introverted, few friends. I was um, bullied and teased at school. I changed schools uh, seven times. Um, I had, you know, just very depressed, unhappy childhood. And when it came to, you know, my older years, when I got into my late teens and early 20s, obviously I wanted, you know, I saw little <laughs> girls around that I was attracted to in my school, college and work. And um, I felt totally helpless. I would, you know, blush and, you know, couldn't say anything. I didn't approach any women. I didn't get any numbers. I didn't get any dates in that time. So it wasn't like I was trying and failing. I was just terrified. And... This kind of continued, but I actually found out, you know, at some point that it was something I could do something about, you know, to learn to be confident and good with women. Mm -hmm. And I studied it as much as I could. Then I went out, I started trying things. And basically, I devised a system that worked. And that was, you know, back in 2006. And then since then, I've written, you know, best-selling book, been featured in all the media. And, you know, I've got my business and, 
you know, things have gone from there. And I guess guys like what I, what I teach because I'm not a natural, I'm not a guy that says just be confident. I'm not a guy that doesn't understand where they're coming from because whatever their problem is, I'm sure that I've had it and I've definitely helped some other guys through it as well. So that's, that's where I am today. Nice, nice. Now, one of the questions I always like to ask, um, and, you know, I might be putting you on the spot is, was there like a light bulb moment in terms of, you know, I know I went through a similar journey and, you know, and, and I know over the course of the journey, there's a lot of like ahas that kind of, oh, wow. Um, but, you know, off the top of your head, when you were going through that journey, was there one big aha that made made the biggest difference for you that you can think of? No, I mean, a few, just as you said that, like a few situations popped into my, my mind, like the first time. I was talking to a couple of girls and they giggled and I was like, what? I made someone laugh instead of them thinking I'm just boring and, you know, awful. And another time when, you know, I was sitting next to this girl and I must have been talking to her for about two hours in the bar and I just desperately wanted to go in for the kiss and I didn't know how to do it. And it's, you know, time was just ticking and ticking. I was like, you know, fuck it and dived in. (laughs) maybe it's, maybe it wasn't even that smooth but it worked and I was like shit I can do it that's amazing so um quite a few yeah I, normally those firsts right you know the first time for each uh big thing whether it's you know approaching a girl in the street or the coffee shop or someone that or maybe getting a compliment for the first time you know instead of being called loser and ugly and get away from me you know but because saying well you're really cool are you a player or or something like that so many 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 i don't think there was one you know really big moment or one moment where just everything changed. yeah or even like an aha moment so like you mentioned um you mentioned the first time you leaned in and, and kissed the girl and and you know how great it was but i even for me like an aha moment during my learning process was um, you can just lean in and kiss them and you don't have yeah. to wait to the end of the night and you don't ha- it doesn't have to be like as you're dropping them off and you, you say good night. ask for it yeah, yeah can I please kiss you yeah yeah no in terms of that stuff I mean something big for me was that I think I gave women um, you know too much respect to the point that they didn't like it you know mm-hmm. because I was like I better not talk to her because she's probably busy I better not try and kiss her because she might not want to Uh, she's probably got a boyfriend or she's probably busy so she wouldn't want to meet me for a date so it was always um you know giving women so much respect that I wouldn't even try anything but when I found that I started trying things in an in the right way Mm -hmm. that the responses were very good and I was able to you know give women what they want because they want a guy that is you know decisive and making the moves so I kind of transitioned from this terrified guy that just you know shit his pants at any second you know to a guy that was confidently making the moves because I knew that the women wanted them. No, uh, yeah, that's a great insight because you know you do get a lot of guys who do kind of make up. You know, we we always in in early sight call it like women have make up my mind for me syndrome, and guys make up their mind in the way that you did, where that they assume the no, they assume where it's like it's really just about you know, being, I think you said, you know, leading them to it or, or, or being confident about your thought of what they want. You know, I was talking to somebody and I always say like, you know, they, they guys get nervous of, oh, well, what if I want to take her here and she, she's not into that kind of place. You know, I want to, I want to yeah. bring her to a sushi restaurant. She doesn't eat sushi. Um, she would rather you just be certain and say, here's where we're going. Then you say, oh, is that okay? Yeah. Is that, you know, don't think about it. It's more, more enjoyable for her to let you lead her wherever and she'll, she'll be fine, you know? For sure. Yeah. It's even nice to have a guy that's a bit, you know, different and a bit of a challenge and having her sit there and not like sushi, she's probably going to end that night happier than if you somehow keep asking her 20 questions and find the ideal perfect restaurant based on those requirements. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, how about, um, cause I know you guys, um, were, 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 were quite huge in bringing guys out and really taking them and working very, very, for years individually with them and in group settings. And I'm curious when you do that, if you notice any common mistakes that, that you're seeing from guys that you're working with over the years, especially yeah, guys that sure. are just starting to, to get into this and just starting to in, improve this area of their life. Yeah. Um, I did lots of things. So, you know, one of the, one of the quite interesting things that I would do is I would get, um, a very beautiful girl, you know, so imagine a very beautiful model and I'd get the, you know, the guy and tell him, you know, okay, like it's a practice date. So I assume he's gotten into a conversation and he has to just talk to her. And there were so many mistakes that would come up in the conversation. 
Um, and then later on, obviously, we get to the escalation. But normally, we, we did it kind of step by step. So it's like approach anxiety, and then it's just a whole litany of conversation mistakes. And then uh, when it's going for the move, either um, not doing it because they're terrified, missing the moment, then ending up just in the friend zone or the girl getting bored and leaving, or m making the move in the wrong way and freaking her out. So probably about six, you know, common mistakes that, you know, a guy would definitely have at least one of them and potentially all. How about for, from a uh, conversation standpoint off the top of your head, what, what what's one or two um, things you notice that, that guys tend to do that's a mistake and, and might hinder attraction? So the guy, when he meets a very beautiful girl, he, he immediately wants to play it safe. So he forgets about, you know, the teasing banter and fun stuff that he does with his friends and he's just playing it safe. It means that, you know, she says something that he thinks is kind of weird or kooky or silly and he's like, oh, wow, that's cool, you know, so he's agreeing. He's generally got a thick smile on his face and it's like, why has he got that smile? You know, a smile should be like a reward for something or yeah. because you're genuinely happy in that moment. He's just got it fixed. So it seems like a fake, you know, like a cheap salesman. Um, he's going to ask her questions because he thinks it's what he should do. You know, what do you do? Where you're from? Where are you from? What do you like to do in your spare time? Whatever these questions, and he's just doing it because it's kind of the template, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's not actually what he wants to know, and it's not actually um, important or relevant or interesting. And therefore, he's got nothing to say about it. So, like, we haven't spoken for a while. I'm genuinely interested. If I'm like, how's you know, what have you been doing in these years? You know, what's going on in your life? I really want to know. You know, and yeah. you tell me I'm going to be listening, paying attention, and then I'm going to comment on that and we're going to go deeper. But if I'm like, OK, I'm talking to this guy, you know, I don't I don't really care, but I guess I need to ask him something. I'm like, so, you know, uh, what do you what do you do today? Yeah. <laughs> you tell me and I'm like, OK, cool. You know, yeah. I've got nothing to say about that. Right. So um, I guess they're so much focused on like what she thinks of him and whether he's got the right body language or whatever it is that he doesn't actually care you know about her so um you can easily fix that you know you just change your your mindset to okay she's beautiful let's forget that now let me find out who she is mm -hmm. right? let me find out what kind of person she is if she's um if she meets my requirements if she's the kind of girl that um of course i'd sleep with her but you know could I have a long-term relationship with her um that's what i'm curious about and um taking away the the dependency like the outcome like i need to get her number i need to sleep with her like let's just have some fun let's find out something about her and that causes you to ask interesting questions to tease her and if it helps you can just follow the structure where you just don't ask question 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 you ask a question listen to the response and you make a statement on it try to connect on it try to go a bit deeper and then switch subjects only when that one's dry, you know. So if you're asking about her work and she loves her job, you can go into that and, like, bring those feelings out. If you ask her about a job and she's like, oh, it's, yeah, it's not very good, you know, something boring, she doesn't like it. Okay, fine, change subjects quickly. But, you know, being, being attentive to that, thinking about what is, – is she feeling something in that moment? You know, is she laughing or is she speaking about something that she's really interested in? You know, because she could be laughing because you're teasing her. She could be um, feeling sexual and her pulse increasing because of the, the sexual tension you're building. Or she could just be talking about shopping or something, but she loves it. Yeah. <laughs> or telling you about some holiday she had, and she's just into that. And all of those things would mean that after that interaction, she looks back and she's like, I felt nice emotions with that guy. So I want to see him again, but... I guess I've gone off on 20 tangents. No, but you brought up, you know, <laughs> you brought up actually there's a handful of things as you were talking that I think, I mean, the last thing you said was, was really, really important and, and was that if she's just talking about things like she's just answering you questions and talking about whatever, you know, her job, but she's not really into it. And then you talk to her, oh, where did you grow up? Um, the conversation ends and she had no real emotional reaction to it. And yeah. you don't have emotional reaction you easily forget something. You're, you're not yeah. charged, you know, and, and you've probably, you know, all the, the times you've been out in the field yourself and, and working with clients, like even if, even if, you know, if you ever seen a, a woman who's like gets mad at a guy, 
it's so much easier to turn that emotional response of anger where, you know, you say something and it pisses her off, but at least yeah. now she's angry. And even, even though that's not necessarily a positive emotion, she has an emotion. And then if you keep going, it's a lot easier to take that anger into attraction than it is indifference into attraction. And, uh, For sure. you know, so the more emotional response you can get, you know, that was something you said. Another thing you said, uh, and I'm just kind of recapping some of the stuff I, I found interesting is, um, you know, the idea that you want to be curious and go into it with a curious mindset and not so much your own agenda of, hey, I got to go in and say funny stuff. And, you know, I have to show her how attractive I am. And I have to tell stories yeah. that, you know, show that I have money or that I have a good, you know, and you just go into it like, let, let me be curious, not only curious in the sense of, um, uh, you know, finding out things about her, because that that can, you know, if you're if you're saying oh I'm just gonna like find out as many facts about her that's not really I think what you're talking about or or you know no. I think curious is like well if I say this kind of thing how's she gonna react if I if I make this sort of statement how you know what kind of reaction will that that get out of her how mm -hmm. you know how how dirty is her sense of humor let me see like you know how how much how quickly can I touch her how comfortable is she there's all these things you can find out in a conversation where you're learning about her where it doesn't involve you know, asking her a million questions about, about her life. So I thought that was a, a good point you made. Exactly. Well. Yeah, I mean, you, it, that stuff doesn't matter, right? All, yeah. all of those, um, you know, the LinkedIn profile or the Facebook profile, the information on there is irrelevant. What what really tells you about someone is, you know, how, if this relationship progressed, how would the time with them be? You know, once you know each other well and you're relaxed, like, how's it going to be? Can you play and joke together? Is it going to be interesting sexually? Can you have deep conversations? Is she, you know, has she got um, strong opinions on stuff? Is, is she really annoying and moody? Or is she really cool and chilled? Is she like one of the guys or is she really feminine? Yeah. Yes, yeah, all of this stuff. This is what in is really interesting. You can't find that out unless you're, um, unless you've got this kind of mindset where you're thinking, because most guys just decide, I want her. She's hot. I want to sleep with her. And they don't care about all that stuff. But yeah. later they will. Like, they really will. And for any guy that's looking for a serious relationship, then it's absolutely 100% necessary that he really thinks about, you know, this stuff, these characteristics that um, are attractive or interesting to him. And then, you know, meets girls and he's, he's really thinking about, like, is she kind, you know? <laughs> things yeah. like things that he doesn't he hasn't cared about to that point maybe so just oh, i need to fuck out yeah. fuck out. he doesn't care and when when you just have that like i already want her vibe you can't really attract her it's kind of counterintuitive but when you've already decided that you want her you're not challenging her you're not showing her approval when she does good things disapproval when she says something that you don't like uh so it kind of kind of bombs and i guess that's that's kind of a, a subtle thing. It's almost, um, you know, in a game, something you need in your mind before you even start talking. But when you have it, then what you say is much better without even uh, layering on any techniques or, you know, any stuff like that. Yeah. No, it's it's funny as you said that. And you've probably experienced this when you said, guys, don't even care that she's not nice. And I'm sure you've <laughs> run in, you know, worked with clients and, and students who they're telling you about what this, you know, they're telling you how much they want this girl. And they're like, I need you to help me get her. And they're talking about her. And you're like, she sounds like an asshole. Like, why do you, even, yeah. you know, why, why do you even want her? Like, um, and the other interesting thing that I found, right. Is that, um, you know, you kind of mentioned like wanting to sleep with her and not, not wanting her so soon. And what I found interesting with guys is that a lot of times it's like, they, they want to sleep with her. Um, and they, but they hide that aspect of it. And oh yeah, they're ashamed of they're, that. They're yeah. ashamed of that. So then they try to they come across like like I want to be your boyfriend and I'm going to like everything you say and agree with everything. Um mm -hmm. and then she knows like immediately, oh this guy wants something from me. He's but, untrustworthy. Yeah, but but at the same yeah, it, but but the one thing that they really want is just, oh, I just wanted to sleep. Well, then why did you hide that and present yourself as this, you know, and then whine cry when you got in the friend zone, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's quite it's quite funny how guys by by being too nice they just come across as dishonest and then it takes longer to sleep with a girl because if i meet her i will say you know she's like do you like my dress i'm like no not really if i don't i don't yeah. it's not like a line i always say yeah. right you know if i don't do you like this no i don't like it um we should go there sometime no that place is shit you know i i would just say things like that and she's kind of like taken aback like hang on he's a bit 
you know, straightforward. But then when I say something like, you know what, you're really cool. Or yeah. um, actually, that's really wise what you just said. That's spot on. She's like, you know, that means a lot. Like she will shiver. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's powerful. Um, and guys that just smile and say me too all the time, they can't have that effect at all. You know, likewise, when we're not just to comp- watch this tangent, you know, likewise, when we're not together and we're texting and stuff like I'm not I'm not answering. I'm 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 quite unavailable. And then they're thinking, like, does he like me? You know, is, does he want to see me again? Uh, what did something happen, you know, on the date that wasn't that good or whatever? And then I message again, like, hey, what are you up to? And she's like, ah, oh, you know, it's that yeah. guy versus you know the guy that's like hey morning what you, how's it going today oh you're at work great and oh good night sweetie exit so i guess you know it's about controlling uh, yourself all through you know the whole process and always keeping in mind her emotions that she needs to feel something and she needs to feel desire for you and interest likewise i don't talk about myself so she, what does she get she gets intrigued i'm mysterious then at some point she just starts grilling me trying to find stuff out yeah. you know because she really wants to know but i don't tell her stuff in the beginning because she just met me she don't want to know yeah yeah it, you know it, it's like you said it's ironic women uh guys will meet a woman and you know they come across as nice which is comes across as dishonest and you know it, it's like if a woman meets you richard you know and, and she's an attractive woman um she knows that you would sleep with her, right? Like all women, of course, yeah. she knows. Like you, so, you don't sometimes have to, they like, even say you just want to sleep with yeah. me, or you're just a player, or something so, like that. So, so you don't even have to. Like guys try to hide that because they're like, oh, but it's like the woman knows that anyway. So why go out of your way to hide it? And then on the other hand, like you mentioned, what, what, you know, what, when when you're not as super eager to please her, what a woman doesn't know is she knows that if, if she talks to you, if she's an attractive woman, she knows if I want to. If I want to fuck Richard tonight, I can, right? Unless you're in a relationship or, or something like that. Um, but if, you, if she, sometimes I've got meetings and stuff, so I yeah, might be busy, but, so she might have to schedule another day. <laughs> but but she but knows that if she, yeah. she knows that if she wants to sleep. But what she doesn't know is, would Richard want to call me again the next day? Would 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 he would he want to be my boyfriend? Like all these things, she doesn't know. Yeah. that. that's where your power lies. Like, is, can I get him? Can as I get him as my more man? Than, as yeah. Boyfriend. If I fuck yeah. him, is he gonna talk to me again? And it's mm-hmm. ironic that most guys immediately show off like, oh, I don't want to fuck you. I just want to keep talking to you, you know, talking to you, talking to you. Yeah. And, you know, how you mentioned with yourself that by kind of holding that information back and not showing that approval, now she's like, yeah, I could, you know, you're more of a challenge, which makes you more interesting, which adds that emotional um, stuff. And also when you do finally give her the approval, like you said, when you do tell her that you like her dress or that, you know, hey, you're cool, um, it hits her at a much more emotional level than yeah. if you're doing that right off the bat. I normally don't give a compliment till after I've had sex. But, yeah. I mean, you know, maybe yeah. something like that, like, you know, about this, something she does is cool or so, or so she said something smart or whatever, but like physical compliment only after sex. Yeah. So the one thing I want to ask you about, because I know that, you know, you, you had mentioned that you were really shy growing up and I know that you have a, you know, one of your breakthrough programs was called Stealth Seduction, which kind of was something that was designed a, a lot to do with kind of coming in under the radar to, to kind of get out of that fear of rejection. So you want to talk a little bit about like the fear of rejection and kind of how guys can, can guy, you know, guys can, I want to say get through that or, or sort of counter that. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, the traditional thing. So, you know, for guys watching this, it's like, okay, you need to go out and talk to 20 women. You know you're going to get rejected, you know, for some of those, right? So it's kind of scary. If you knew that it would work, obviously you'd be fine with it. So what what stops you is that fear of rejection. So even though you probably know that you would get at least 20%, you know, results, you'd probably get some good reactions. The thing that holds you back is that fear of rejection. So the whole idea of uh, stealth attraction was that uh, if we can find a way to you know, approach women, get into interactions um, without any chance of rejection, but then also escalate physically, go for the kiss without any chance of rejection, then we've got something, you know, super powerful. And working in the, you know, the clubs of London, New York, different places, uh, that 
that was what I was doing, you know, because I was in a, you know, like a high end environment with a lot of the same people, the club scene in, in those levels are actually quite, you know, tight, right? So you can't just go around, you know, the small boutique club and hit on all 10 women, right? You need to yeah. be very smooth, subtle, under the radar, because you can't risk that public rejection. If you're in a club with 1000 people, fine. So um, I honed a technique um, you know, for each stage of the interaction where there could be rejection so that there isn't any. And I think that, um, you know, the, the traditional approach that guys have is like the girl's over there, she's a stranger, The you know, she might have a boyfriend, she might hate me, she might hate men, she might not speak English, like, you know, a million things. And just all of the reasons for not, not doing it um, means that we live in a world where men don't find the women that, they need and women are not even happy because they're meeting the wrong guys you know and it's all fucked up and the biggest problem is probably that you know the guys just don't approach when they like someone or don't say when they like someone so can you um you know i i know that it's an entire you know topic that we can open up but you know in, in a smaller scale of, of some of the stuff you're talking about like give an example yeah an example of, of maybe some you know i i know one of your 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 big things is like non-verbal game and you know, something that, that kind of uh, shows some element of being under the radar. So give you, I'll give you, a, you know, one example of many. So let's say you're talking to three girls in a bar mm -hmm. and you like, you know, one of them. Let's say it's the one on the right. And you're speaking to all of them, but you're giving her slightly more attention. You've got your hands by your side. She's got her hands by her side. Um, after... 20, 30 minutes or however long when you decide that, you know, you like that one and it's kind of going well, you could just have the back of your hand touch the back of her hand and just, you know, just put it there. So you're not, it's not taking her hand. It's just back of hand on back of hand. But if you imagine that feeling now, it's actually quite intimate. You know, your fingers are touching, back of your hand is touching. Now, what have you got there? She's not going to take her hand away as if, you know, it was a, you know, boiling fire there, right? But if she doesn't like it, she will move like one centimeter, you know, she'll move her hand away one centimeter. So I've got all of these kind of um, ways to escalate and test the water all the way to the kiss in the bedroom like that. So yeah. that you're testing, and plus her friends didn't even see, by the way, your friends didn't see, the whole bar didn't see. So it's like you've gone over, you're talking to these girls, it's kind of going okay. You test it like that. She keeps her hand there or she even plays back and starts, you know, touching your fingers or something. You know you're in. You're probably sleeping with her tonight. Yeah. And how did you tell? You could probably just go away to talk to your mate, say, I'm going to be back in a, in, uh, in a little while. Come back and say, but babe, let's go. And she'll leave with you, you know, because you've already tested it all the way. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that's that's kind of what, what I always did. And people were always surprised when they see me in the bar because it's like he's talking to the girl and then he's kissing her or he, he's just walking and then they're leaving or you know he just they didn't see it because they were missing the small little mm. moves yeah. because they weren't the usual moves of put your arm round lunging for the kiss you know kind of the drunk guy's playbook yeah you know what I like about that move is uh, a couple things one is that you know you said it allows you to kind of gauge her interest level um if she keeps her hand there you can assume that she's into it and mm -hmm. you know it, it, it makes you more confident to, to kind of progress things with her um the other thing about it is that you know i always say like attraction really isn't black or white like a lot of times a girl doesn't really know how she feels she's not really you're just some guy there and you know you, you're okay looking to her but what's interesting is that by doing that there's a, there's sort of a sexual tension that's going to develop, yep. you know, even if, if I wasn't into some girl and all of a sudden she walks over and she kind of, she's kind of her hands touching me, just the mere fact that, that she's a female and I'm a male, I'm going to sit there and all of a sudden I'm going to have that, you know, that physical touch that is an innocent, you know, it's not like I can be like, oh, mm -hmm. that's creepy because it's innocent, but I'm going to now start thinking about her in, in that other way, even if I hadn't been because of that sexual tension that's Cause there. Because it's, it's innocent, but it's unusual. Like yeah. it's, a, it's the kind of touch that um is almost intimate yep. but it's acceptable so it gives you all the, the answers and that's exactly right what you said you know got a lot of guys end up in the friend zone and it doesn't matter if they're 
you know, rich, handsome, like, you know, the ideal guy that she's actually in that moment. She says, I want a guy that went to Harvard and got $10 million and drives a Lamborghini. And that guy comes in. Um, he's going to, you know, she ain't going to leave with him if she doesn't feel the sexual tension, yeah. right? So the way you get her to feel it is by doing stuff like this, you know, just injecting these subtle things in. Um, uh, of course, you can be really verbally crass and stuff like, you're so sexy, I want to have sex with you. Or something. But that just rarely works. That doesn't work on women. And, it, and, and you know, I think it also, you know, what's good about this and, and that not every guy has the personality to pull off that sexual crass talk. Some guys do. You yeah. Know, we, we both have friends that can go out and be at a party and just say the most outlandish shit. Whereas, you know, both of us, um, myself and yourself, you know, we tend to be more on the quieter introverted Which side. Which gentleman, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if, you know, it, it, if somebody says, oh, you got to say this sort of thing to the, a girl, if it's not your personality type, it's, it's going to fall flat. Like if you go out and you sure. try to be this loud, you know, sexually aggressive verbally guy, although it, it can work quite well for some guys, if that's not your style, it's going to fall. Where something like this, no matter what your your verbal style is, um, it's still going to work, you know? I would say the verbal stuff is just too obvious and it forces her to make a decision. So it's like, I want to sleep with you. She has to think in that moment, uh, do I want to sleep with him? Mm-hmm. It's, it's not the question you want a girl to be asking. And, you know, really at any point, you just want it to just happen smoothly, not to have the moment where she needs to decide. So when you start doing things non-verbally, they don't trigger that um, decision point. You know, so she just goes with it because it's pleasant, goes with it, goes with it, goes with it, and then she's in your bed. But like you said, you know, some guys can be, you know, really loud and brash and sexual verbally and stuff. And that will work for some guys on some girls. But if you want to talk about something that would work for any guy with any type of girl, then it's the nonverbal stuff like this. Yeah, I can. uh, As you're telling this, I'm remembering a story. uh, it was a, uh, it was like a, a graduation party several years after I graduated college and we're all hanging out and, you know, it's a pool party and, and then we all drink in and hanging out and we, we start, you know, it's like 10 guys, 10 girls and we're, we're falling, you know, passing out in, in, in different couches and, um, I'm laying on a couch in this like six foot, like beast of a, of a, of a girl lays down next to me. Right. And I'm laying there. And, I, and all of a sudden, I feel somebody rubbing my hand, and I'm like, who's that? You know. But I just kind of went with it because it was the end of the night. And mm-hmm. next thing I know, I'm like turning over and kissing this girl. And I'm like, and I'm like, what the hell am I doing? You know. And it's because <laughs> she went with it in, in this sort of way, whereas had she tried to verbally flirt with me, I would have just shot it down. Or know? just jumped, like grabbed your dick or something. Yeah. <laughs> like or, something or, that, was, exactly. that was too much. Or Exactly. Or if she – or if she just started, you know, putting her hand on my pants, I would have been like, what? But by, by laying there, I was very relaxed, very comfortable. The next thing I know, you know, I snapped myself out of it. But mm-hmm. a woman that I never would have had any interest in, um, just just by doing that, um, allowed she her to She wants self-attraction, I think. <laughs> exactly. So, so, you know, talk, talk, talk to me a little bit about, you know, what else is in stealth attraction. And tell, tell the people listening, it's, it's been a... Um, you know, probably one of the 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 most uh, talked about and successful programs that, that that I can remember having come out with over over the past uh, several years. Um, you know, we want to give the guys some idea of what else you dig into in, into the program. Cool. So I mean, it's a it's kind of a open to close method. You know, it's got how to um, you know recognize the signals, how to generate the signals in women, how to you know, appear more attractive so that you kind of prime the approach, you know, because a woman's already judged you when she's kind of seen you out of the corner of her eye. So we go from that moment through to what to say, the early stages of the interaction, um, lots of conversation stuff, some great stuff on teasing, which is very important for building attraction. And then into the end about you know, the escalation to the kiss in all kinds of uh, different ways, different um, scenarios, some quite sexual stuff. And then, of course, how to take them home um, right there. And it that stuff is, you know, that's very focused on, uh, I would say, nighttime, which means, you know, bar. It means club. But it also means first date when you're having, you know, drinks or something like that. 
Um, so there's a, a night element to it, but then we've also got a massive day game component uh, that we've we've got in there that is you know absolutely huge. And this day game is very different. Um, you don't touch as much. You don't stand as close. You don't need to shout in their ear. Um, it's way more verbal than mm. nonverbal. So we've got the whole day game blueprint in there as well, and that that shows guys how to meet women in you know any day daytime location, whether it's a mall, coffee shop, street, whatever it is. Nice, nice. So um, Richard and I have put a link together for you guys at tsbmag.com forward slash stealth where you can learn more about uh, stealth seduction. Um, and you know the one thing that that I will say, and, and you probably if you're listening to this, you can see that with, with Richard is that, um, you know, he, he's really been out there. I, he, he's been in this 10 years and, and I've done several interviews with him over the years. And I still reference stuff on conversation, you know, and connection that, that, that I've learned from him. I've, I've, I've referenced a lot of stuff over the years from him. Um, I've still gone back and read his book, uh, the natural art of, of, of attraction or seduction. Seduction. Sedu- Natural Art of Seduction. Um, you know, it's a paperback book that I've, I have on my bookshelf and, and, and when I'm cool. trying to reference something to somebody. So he's definitely a guy that, that, that has been around a, a while and definitely you can learn a lot from. Um, tsbmag.com forward slash stealth. Um, any final, you know, piece of advice you want to leave the listeners with? Mm, I mean, to wrap up, you know, we could, we could just do a little recap. So, sure, yeah. um, you know, have the right mindset. That's going to make your conversations better. Remember that, you know, women expect a sexual man. They expect a man that is decisive and making moves. And as long as those moves are respectfully made, you should make them. You know, yeah. if you go on a date with the girl that you've always wanted and you don't go for the kiss, you're disappointing her and, and me and you as well, probably yeah? mm-hmm. <laughs> disappointing everyone. Right. So you need to make those moves and you just need to make them in the smooth, respectable way. And then you'll make everyone happy. So, um, you know, just just that should really help your game. But it is possible to to do it so that you're not facing countless rejections, and you can just jump straight to getting the great results, not go through the years of pain and suffering that I had to to yeah. get there. <laughs> Isn't that funny though? The guys that you said they when they're out with her and they don't make a move, it's funny because they think they're doing it for her. They think they're like. Yeah, you know, show her it's respect. Like she's going home and she's pissed off because she's like, yeah, she was horny. She she's was like, like I put on my fucking outfit, I dressed up for this guy, and he doesn't even fucking try to kiss me. Like, what the fuck? Like, you know, it, yeah. it's funny that as a guy, and I'm he's like, like, I got her number. Yeah. yeah, and she's like, oh, I'm not seeing him again. He's useless. Yeah. He didn't make. He didn't make a move. Yeah, it's funny how guys think. So, um, so yeah. So if you are the type of guy who who does have that fear of rejection and it prevents you from making moves. Um, I definitely recommend checking out Richard's video uh, because as you can see a lot of what he's learned and a lot of the techniques that he teaches involve kind of going in under the radar, which I think is really cool. Because there's a, I guess there's something we haven't mentioned. There's a lot of cool psychology stuff as well. I studied NLP and hypnosis mm-hmm. and all of that. And it doesn't involve like hip, hypnotizing women, but very smart use of language so that it's very hard for women to say no and they just want you. So there's yeah. there's a lot of that as well. Yeah, yeah. So guys, check it out. Uh, there's a link below, tsbmag.com forward slash stealth. And I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure I'm going to get Richard back on here because like I said, it's it's been too long since the last time we did this and I always get a lot of, out of it and I know my uh, readers do as well. Yeah, man, that's great. Let's not leave it so long for sure. Yeah, definitely. All right, Rich, have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sure.